Hi, welcome to Chainmail Bikini, episode four. I'm your host, Jen. Uh, this time, I know I said previously that I was not going to do this, uh, but I already had Neverwinter installed, so I'll give it a look. Uh, you can see I've already got a character made. I decided to make a... Uh, these are called Tieflings. Got a swishy tail swishing about. Uh, but you can see this this is a free-to-play game, but like most free-to-play games, it's got a lot of paid options. You can see you get a whopping two character slots. Let's go ahead and use our second character slot. Now, I do want to go ahead and say this is a good chance while we watch this lovely cutscene where if you really want to see it in its entirety, you can go to YouTube. Uh, though it's not so bad. I, uh, I kind of want to play this lady. You can't play that lady. So, this is a good chance to talk a little bit about, uh, ableism when it comes to these games. I don't normally identify as disabled, so for me it's always particularly striking when there's something like this game, and and I'll take a look. I haven't played it in a couple months. It's possible this is something they've changed. Uh, but when there's a game that has a control system that's very much set in stone that you can't change to compensate for any issues, uh, in my case I have very bad carpal tunnel in my right hand from my previous employer. Uh, and, you know, that's that's not the only thing I've got going on, but I don't, like I said, I don't usually identify as disabled because normally I get by pretty well. Uh, I think there are a lot of people who deserve to uh, speak up on that a lot more than I do. Uh, but in this case, like I said, it makes it even more striking when there is something. Uh, I know there have been games, I want to say one of them may have been Star Wars Galaxies, uh, but... I know with World of Warcraft, it's very adaptable. Uh, like I said before, I, I keyboard move in that, which is not popular, but perfectly viable because of my problems with my right hand and my wrist. Uh, and no, I don't trust my left hand enough to move my mouse over to that one. Uh, so... That sort of accessibility makes those games really popular with people who do have those issues, with people who perhaps don't even have use of both of their hands, if they can play that game despite that, if they can have that social contact of an MMO, that makes a huge difference. Uh, so I'm, I'm a little disappointed in this one for locking down the controls to the point where it just assumes that you are absolutely 100% able and can do that. Uh, but let's let's take a look at the game itself though. Uh, you got some zombies. I like zombies in general. Uh, I have several years history with Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, mostly starting off with 4th edition though I've played some 3.5. In this case, uh, this particular game is based a lot more on 4th edition. Uh, there's the previous Dungeons & Dragons Online, which is also a free-to-play. That one was v based very heavily on 3.5. The distinctions are kind of hard to explain to someone who isn't really familiar with either one. Uh, you only can really explain the distinctions by comparing them to each other. Uh, I will say that 4th edition is said to be a lot more like something like World of Warcraft, where your class gets X number of abilities, and it's, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, also like World of Warcraft, Dracolich. But that was in Dungeons & Dragons first, so let's be fair. Now we are finally to our character select screen. And I know I, I'm sorry I could have skipped through that, but I felt that it was worth having a moment to uh, do some introductions. So our options, now these are going to be our free-to-play options. You get half-orcs, 
You get your humans, of course, because with all these options, sure, you totally want to play humans. Get your elves. Your half elves, because yeah, I guess humans and elves, they, they like to get busy. You got your drow, or sometimes known as dark elves. Now, this setting is specifically, uh, since it's never winter, it is specifically Forgotten Realms. Uh, with Dungeons and Dragons, it's really intended to just be a rule system for fantasy gaming, and there are different settings you can play in that have different flavors. Forgotten Realms is, is your pretty standard generic fantasy setting. Uh, in this case, since these are Forgotten Realms, Forgotten Realms Drow. That means that they are basically a culture that is a matriarchal culture as imagined by a really horrible misogynist. Uh, basically, it's just a bunch of catty dominatrices. Uh, but we'll probably end up coming back to that because despite uh, their poor, <laughs> poor concept in Forgotten Realms specifically, I got a soft spot for them. Uh, we have dwarves. We have halflings, which are... They're little people. I mean, they're kind of hobbity, let's be honest. Tieflings, who are sort of half-demon people. And high elves, who... Basically, they're, they're a lot like... These are a lot more like the High Elves that you'd see in World of Warcraft, whereas these are a little more... And you can even tell in their outfits, these are little more your Forest Elves. High Elves are the elves that are going to be very magic-themed, and Elf Elves are the ones who are going to be very foresty. Uh, I guess we can go through the male options real quick. Yep, that's male half-orc. That's totally a male human. Totally a male elf. Male half-elf. Very... Nice and clericky paladin y there. Male high elf. Actually, was there. Yeah, I guess there's a little difference. Tiefling, halfling, dwarf, and drow. I, know, so bad. I think when I started this, drow was actually a paid option, so let's see if it'll actually let us continue with that. Yeah, we we can be drow, so I'm I'm gonna be a drow. I'm sorry guys, but I'm gonna be a drow. So your options, you can be a trickster rogue, a devoted cleric, a control wizard, a hunter ranger, a great weapon fighter. <laughs> that is a big sword. Guardian fighter which looks to be pretty clearly your tank. Or you can be a coming soon. That's, you know, I'm, I'm pretty fond of that class myself. I don't know, I mean, it's, he's, he's kind of little for, for that sword. You know what, I think we're gonna go straight up armor and DPS here. The Great Weapon Fighter is an unstoppable force of damage and steel, skilled in using the weight of a great sword to dispatch those that stand in the way. The epitome of strength, the Great Weapon Fighter is also resilient enough to defend allies in need. Good enough. Uh, here we get your good old D&D ability scores. It lets you know your primary ability is strength, your secondary ability is constitution and dexterity. Now, strength is the one that determines the power of your physical attacks. Uh, constitution is your hit points, usually. Uh, dex is usually... This shows it as a secondary ability. Oh, his is, oh, his is 17 because he's a drow, because he gets plus 2 to dex and wisdom. Uh, which suits the fact that they're not really all that suited to, uh, to being wielders of giant swords. Though I will point out that uh, as far as drow go, normally a character like this in actual Dungeons and Dragons in the, the tabletop game, 
And this is something that, that I've liked about 4th edition a little more than 3.5, because I was foolish enough to try to make an attempt to play a Drow character in 3.5. As far as Drow characters go, really any character, if you're going to play a race that is not necessarily best suited to your class, it's not going to cripple you. You're not going to be optimized. If you're in a game like this, it's an MMO and everybody's super raiding, then I guess the raid guilds might not want somebody who's not optimized. But it's not going to kill you. Uh, now, each, and, and I, should, uh, I should explain for those who don't really play D&D or 4th edition, because this is specific to 4th edition, uh, each race has, they have one of these abilities that they get a plus two in automatically, and then your choice of one of two other ones. Uh, now for humans, you basically just to get to choose a plus two to whatever, because, you know, humans, <laughs> fantasy things like to use them as the baseline. Uh, so yeah, in a case like this, Drow's not necessarily going to be your absolute best fighter. We could go back for a moment and take a look if we were to say Cleric. I don't know who a male Drow is going to be a Cleric of, presumably somebody who hates Loth. But you can see Wisdom in this case, that's a little more helpful. You get a plus two to Wisdom. But if we go back and... In that case, you get the plus two to charisma and then the plus two to dexterity. Now, as a control wizard, though, I mean, that's basically... Controller is a, a role that does not show up in a lot of other... Well, it does a little bit show up in, in other... MMOs. Uh, if we go to World of Warcraft, for instance, a uh, controller would be like your mage who sheeps stuff. Uh, it's something that tends to be spread out amongst other classes rather than something that is just a particular class's specialty. With D&D 4th Edition, you have your defenders, which are your tanks, uh, your leaders, which are your healers. Usually they also just give a variety of other buffs. Uh, you've got your damage dealers, and then you have controllers. And your controllers, like I said, they're, they're a dedicated crowd control role. Uh, but... Oh, look at that. He's got a... I love, I love uh, archery in games like this. I think this probably suits him best. His primary ability is dexterity. Secondary are wisdom with which he also gets a bonus to, and strength for some reason or another. Uh, we can also tell it to re-roll. Hey look, now we have an 18 in dex, a 16 in wisdom. That, that'll do. Uh, and like I said, we could go with the great weapon fighter. It's not going to kill us to take something that's not optimized. You know what, I'll do that. Because uh, cause I, like, I like big swords. I like ridiculously small elves with ridiculously large swords. Let's see what we can roll up. That's pretty good. 18 strength, 15 dex, 13 con. That'll do. Ah, I see. It, it lets you choose which one you want. Either plus 2 dex, plus 2 charisma, or plus 2 dex, plus 2 wisdom. But it assumes that you're going to want whichever one is better for you. You know what? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I have a habit of making characters where wisdom is their lowest stat. I can't imagine how that might reflect on real life. I'm, I'm gonna go with that just so we can uh, not have any anything below a 10. So here are our character choices. Let's see here. Okay, so we get our presets here make him look super ugly. Interestingly, this has them being 
a very sort of African dark. Normally, maybe this is just the lighting on this particular screen. Normally, drow are presented as a little more purple or blue-black rather than brown. Uh, but we'll see. like starting with that. Go to customize. Oh, that's kind of cute. It's smaller one. <laughs> oh, a faux hawk. Yeah, because cause male drow aren't emo enough. Actually, judging from over here, I mean, that's that's pretty brown, so that's interesting. Which kind of makes it even worse that they're the evil elves. Oh, Forgotten Realms. You are... <laughs> you sure were conceived by straight white men. <laughs> Here's the beaver look, because, you know, gotta have the beaver. You see, it's it's a lot of different options. Oh, there's the the samurai. Here are your your whopping hair options. But let's be honest, everybody just goes with the white hair on drow. Get some eye options. <laughs> Give them scary bloody eye if you really want to. Let's just let's, let's give them normal non-unpleasant eyes. <laughs> you cannot customize the facial hair of male members of the drow race. He's an elf. You get no beard. Make him look super old, just kind of old. Moderately old. Ah, here we can change the skin tone. But yeah, no matter what, it looks like, despite previous examples, you pretty much, it's, it's definitely more of a brown than a purple. Here are, of course, everybody has facial tattoo options in games these days, which is really odd because it's not like the NPCs usually use them this often. It almost, almost makes you feel like you're compelled. Oh, he, he would be more, uh, that would be more impressive <laughs> if his skin wasn't already so dark. Morose. Oh man, you can make him look like the crow. That's pretty hardcore, guys. I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> yeah, you know, I... I always think it's kind of silly that they add this in here, like it's something that every character has when it's really not... You do get to go through and do very fine uh, detailing on that. <laughs> drow toned. Let's go with Drow slim. No, let's not, because he's got a gigantic sword, and why does he even have that sword? Normally with elves, I would go with the, the slimmer one. And wow, yeah, you can really fine tune this. So let's continue from here. <laughs> Each selection is for flavor and has no effect on gameplay. So here are your character origins and your deity affiliation, which, as it said, is just for flavor, which is nice. I mean, a lot of... Well, MMOs sort of vary on how much they really encourage the character side of things. Uh, I guess with Dungeons & Dragons, you're going to kind of expect that they're going to have a lot of that. Uh, so... Where is good place? <laughs> the North Dark. The Dark Dark. The Dark Bad. 
Yeah, I, uh... I suppose he's... Oh, okay. Escaped slave. Because, of course, the drow being a matriarchal culture from someone who <laughs> hates women. Naturally, all the men are kept as breeding slaves, because cause that's so sad. Also, totally not anyone's hot, hot fantasy. Here we have the deities of... Ah, uh, Kelimvor is my favorite. He is basically the unaligned god of death. Now, the, uh, the sort of default setting for 4th edition was even better, because instead of Kelimvor, that role is filled by the Raven Queen, who is pretty much the Morrigan. Uh, so I'm I am very fond of, of that particular uh, incarnation of the deity. But here in Forgotten Realms, everything is boring, so it's Kellum 4. So, being the Lord of the Dead means he really, really hates the undead. So there's that. Uh, Corlon, I believe, in other settings, at least, uh, tends to be sort of a, a patron to quote, air quote, good drow. Because he is sort of the, the elf god. Uh, but, yeah, I'm gonna go with Kelimvor, because, because screw that. I've got a great weapon fighter. He's a drow. He's got some okay ability scores. Ooh, you can have a biography. I'm gonna skip that for now because honestly, I am a total nerd and I would probably sit here for like 20 minutes writing something up and I'd feel super self-conscious that people were watching me. So I'm going to randomize him a name. These are really, wow, not a lot of options here. He is a whopping level one. And here is an exciting loading screen. Look out! Struggling! Drag the liches are best liches. Hey, are you all right? Move around using the W, A, S, and T keys. Okay, so right here, we are just far enough in that I am going to call it quits for this episode. And hopefully see you back in episode two, where I get to actually try to play the game and see if it's become any easier through subsequent patches. See you later.